My 34F life is falling apart and it's all thanks to my husband. We had a perfect life. Both of us worked in the jobs we loved. We have a beautiful daughter, 10F, and a healthy son, 5M. When I was pregnant with our son, we both almost died due to complications. So before the birth and even afterwards I didn't want to have intimacy, why would I? I almost died and my body was in pain for months afterwards, even with strong medication. I thought my husband understood because he never pushed me for cuddles, or even asked. I thought it was because he understood my pain, but apparently he was just getting it from somewhere else. A few months ago we were visited by Child Protective Services, I was terrified at first frantically thinking of what we did wrong with our children to cause a visit. But no, as it turns out some woman I've never met before died in a car accident leaving behind a daughter, and my husband's name was on the girl's birth certificate, and he was named in the woman's will as the father. I thought it was a mistake at first, until my husband told me the truth. As it turns out while I was suffering my pregnancy and the after effects of almost dying, my husband would go to a woman he knew at work and get it off with her. He said this as if he did me a favor. Well as the CPS worker explained to us, my husband is her closest living relative that can care for her. The woman's family apparently wanted nothing to do with the poor little girl. When she asked us if we wanted to take her and I said yes. Yes I know this might be the true cause of all my issues, but my husband pawned that poor girl off to live with her single mother for 5 years, he doesn't get to pawn her away when she needs help. She's his responsibility, and now is ours. I told him I'll help take care of the necessary visits for wellness checks, and help with whatever CPS wants us to do. All he had to do was explain everything to our children. The fact I'm saying this tells you what he did. Yes. Nothing. We had to clean out a room and buy new furniture and even looked for some toys. Our children go to a private school so I picked up some more work hours in order to be able to afford her tuition. I was the one who had to tell our extended families the big change because he didn't want to do so. I did almost all the heavy lifting. So color me shocked when his daughter finally joins our family two weeks ago and the first words out of our children's mouths was, Who's that? Yes, I was the one who had to tell our children's school, extended families, family doctors, and my workplace about my husband's affair and subsequent addition to our family. But he couldn't tell our children being he was too ashamed to face them. So guess who was the one who had to explain that they have a sister now, as I'm trying to settle the poor girl into her new home and room? And shocker, our children didn't take the news well as it was happening right in front of them. My daughter was screaming while crying causing my son and the little girl to cry. A situation that could have been avoided if my husband just did the one thing I asked of him and explained everything to them much sooner. It's been two weeks of her living with us and the situation hasn't improved. My husband has not picked up the slack that comes with having a new addition to the family so we're struggling right now to make ends meet. I feel embarrassed bringing all three children around for appointments and groceries because the little girl is very much obviously not mine and I can tell people are judging our family. My daughter is much moodier and less happy and refuses to even acknowledge our newest addition to the family. Our son doesn't really understand what is going on and it's causing even him to lash out. And I don't even know how to help the poor little girl because I know that if I feel like my life is falling apart, she must feel even worse. I suggested family therapy, therapy for our children, even just marriage therapy so we can hopefully move past this and work together as a unit for all the children. He's refused everything, saying that he knows he'll be lectured by everyone when all he was doing was trying to help me. I just don't know how to fix this, please help me. I don't want to divorce him because I just know that will make it worse for the kids, but that's the only option my family is telling me. Meanwhile his family is begging me to make this work and to just look past it. Thank you. I hear you all loud and clear. We'll be looking into therapy for me and the children and hopefully a good divorce lawyer. But first I need to get some answers because some of you are raising some good points. Relevant comments. Opion if she was sure her husband wasn't cheating now. I know this is pathetic to say, but I really did think he was amazing before all of this. When I gave birth to our daughter, he stepped up to the plate by caring for her and doing housework. He was an attentive father to both of our children before all of this. I was able to tell him I need to take a break and he would just step to it and care for them and make sure I could relax. I don't know why he committed such an affair and then try to excuse himself and I don't know why he's decided to not care about our children as much as he used to be. I guess I just keep hoping if we all go to therapy and find the root of the issue we can fix it and go back to how our relationship used to be. Now reading all these comments that are sounding just like my family I guess I was just being naive. OP on leaving the child to her father as the girl is not OP's responsibility. OP was told to leave her husband. I have to disagree with this comment. As much as I hate my husband's actions, I do not hate her enough to just abandon her in such a terrible time for her. I agreed to take her into our home, so she is indeed my responsibility as much as my husband's. 
And I didn't say this at first because I didn't know if it was important, but she and my son have gotten really close in such a short amount of time I would feel heartbroken separating the two. Update 1. I'm sorry, you all were right. It was a lie. When all of you were pointing out how the kids' responses to youngest arriving didn't make sense, it made me realize how correct that is. They came home to a room all made up and I made passing comments to them asking about how excited they were for youngest arrival. They should have known about her. At this point, I decided to just ask my eldest daughter directly because she was still so upset about it and I think subconsciously knew I wasn't going to get the truth from husband. So I went to her room while she was lying in bed and I asked her. I told her that I asked her father to explain to the two of them what was going to happen. They saw her new room. I talked about her to them so I don't understand my eldest reaction. So yes, it turns out husband didn't tell them and then me the truth. A surprise to no one I am figuring out. The story he told the kids was that youngest was a daughter of one of our friends, and we felt so bad we had to take her in. Nothing about her being their half-sister, or him having a daughter with another woman. Well, when she came home that day, and the kids asked who she was, the pictures we were able to share of youngest she had braids in and wore much different clothing than when she arrived. It was my response to them that ruined his little lie. This is youngest's name, your half-sister, remember? Our son was too young to really get what it meant, but our daughter did. That's why she freaked out that day. Not because of the new addition to the family, but because what the new addition meant. I apologize for causing her to freak out that day, for not sitting both her and her brother down for a real discussion over how they feel and to make sure their father did what he was supposed to do, and apologized for only talking to her now after she had a much-deserved reaction to it all. My daughter accepted the apology, and I asked her if that was why she was distant from the youngest. She told me that's part of it. And because word got out at her school about what the newest addition to our family going to the school meant so now she's getting teased and picked on for having a father who cheated. It broke my heart realizing just how badly I messed up. By continuing to beg the spineless man they called a father to help them and then allowing myself to get shut down, I was essentially allowing all the kids needs to be ignored. I told daughter I'll sign her and her brother and sister up for therapy. Of course the pathetic man tried to plead with me not to when I mentioned signing the kids up, but I told him to give it up already. All three children's lives have changed, and it will help them adjust with a professional to speak to. He's been grumbling and whining about it, but I don't care anymore. And this might cause many to be upset with me, but I'm in the process with husband to have him transfer custody of youngest to me. I've grown to care for her, and as some comments in my last post have pointed out once I do divorce him and leave with our kids I don't doubt he'll treat her awfully or neglect her. He's been right on board, and it took some convincing but his parents finally agreed to be witnesses. I got all the paperwork set up and scheduled an appointment with an attorney to help with anything else. Once that happens, I'll try to get everything I need in order to have a smoother divorce and then subsequent move to be closer to my family. Thank you to everyone for giving me a good slap in the face and help me realize that the children and I deserve better and I was being so gullible into thinking a man who cheats on his dying pregnant wife is deserving of any respect. Update 2. How do you tell your children you're going to divorce their father? I have three children an 11-year-old daughter, and two 6-year-olds, a son and daughter. Just recently after months of court hearings, home visits, background checks, and interviews with a judge and a social service worker I've been granted custody of my 6-year-old daughter with her biological father, my husband, giving up parental rights to me. Right now I'm looking into how a divorce will go and what I need to get any affairs in order to make the process as smooth as possible for everyone involved. The reason for the divorce is because of how he behaved when his adultery came into light. As you can see from the ages, he cheated on me with a co-worker of his while I was dealing with a highly complicated pregnancy and birth. I was the one who had to get everything in order. Meanwhile, it seemed like he did everything he could to make the process of a new addition to our family as difficult as possible. He lied to our children, refused to take all three children to therapy, and when I did take them he whined and complained, refused to take on extra workload to help our budget stabilize after a new addition, refused to even acknowledge the children were struggling, and even refused to take all three children out and about because he didn't want people to judge, but it was perfectly fine for me to go through it. Basically, it felt like I was the only one trying to repair our family and have us move forward while he made damn sure we were stuck and hurting because he refused to acknowledge that he messed up. Divorce is the only option for me at this point. I just want to know, how can I explain this to my children? I've seen how refusing to actually explain to children can hurt them. Hell, I was the one picking up the pieces from last time thanks to him. I just don't want there to be any more lashing out or fighting. I'm terrified for my eldest in particular. She was the one most hurt by all these changes and I know she'll understand why. The last thing I want is for her to blame her siblings or herself. I've yet to tell anyone else my plans for divorce because I don't want it getting back to him or the kids before I'm ready. 
And if there is no way to make the impact easier, how can it make sure it's less damaging for them? Opie has only replied to one comment. The commenter questioned parts of Opie's story, more specifically why she stayed and helped take care of his affair child, and confused on the custody of said affair child and the biological children. Okay, let me try to help I'm sorry for the confusion. I discovered her existence about a year ago because her biological mother died in a car accident. It's a little confusing here, and he still won't give me the why of this, but he was on her birth certificate as the father so social services did the usual of home visits and background checks to place her with us because I refused to allow him to turn his back on her and have her struggle in the foster care system. I'm a nurse in the pediatric trauma center. I have been there as emotional support for children when they've been told about a parent's passing in accidents or we had to make the tough call to CPS for abuse cases. I do not wish for anyone to witness when a child realizes that they're an orphan or being taken away from their parents. It's why I pushed for us to take her in. People on Reddit have told me that I'm too much of a saint for taking her in and that's why they don't believe me. But if you ever had to rub the back of a four-year-old having her first panic attack because she was told her parents didn't survive I hope you understand why I refuse to ignore a five-year-old who this time I could save from the system. After the fallout that was primarily caused by my husband, and truth be told I also have some blame for it as well. I decided to divorce him. I asked him to transfer her custody to me because I knew after the divorce there's a high chance they would keep her with him, and he wouldn't be a good father to her. I didn't want to risk the chance of that. I know that if I was the one to have custody of her, I won't have to worry about that in the divorce. And it's only the six-year-old daughter he transferred custody over to. He still is a recognized father to our biological children. And thank you for the suggestion of age-appropriate dialogue for our children. I do have some training on that because of my work so I could try to rework it to make sense for divorce. And probably bump up therapy for the children. Update 3 I wasn't sure I'd be posting another update, but things took a turn I didn't expect. So, last weekend, my husband did the unexpected. He decided to throw a family party to show everyone how fine things were. He didn't ask, just announced it. I was floored but decided to roll with it. I thought maybe this was his sad attempt at stepping up, at least a bit of a goodbye to normalcy for the kids. I agreed on the condition that he'd take care of every detail. Well, he didn't handle anything. The house was a disaster. And when I reminded him that, he just shrugged and said, let's keep it casual. So I ended up staying up half the night cleaning, cooking, and somehow setting up decorations while he was busy, drinking with a friend in the garage. I was fuming, but I figured at least I'd make it a nice night for the kids. On the day of the party, guests started showing up early mostly his family. Not one of them offered to help, and his mother kept making little digs at me like, I'm so glad you're giving him another chance. And, it's so nice for the kids to see you both back together. I smiled through it, biting my tongue. His mother hugged my husband like he was a war hero just for showing up, while I served everyone food I'd made alone the night before. Then came the big moment. Husband decided he'd, say a few words, to everyone. Standing there, acting like he was father of the year, he launched into a speech about, family unity. He called the kids up, including our newest addition, he gave a half-hearted apology for how things started, but said he was committed to working things out. I almost choked on my drink, but our eldest daughter looked like she was about to explode. When he finished his speech, I noticed our daughter slipping out of the room. I followed her and found her outside. Sitting by herself, her face flushed. She asked me why I was letting him lie to everyone. She was angry and hurting, and I couldn't hide it from her anymore. So, right then and there, I told her the truth. I told her that I didn't agree with her dad, that I was working on a plan to make things better for all of us, and that I was doing everything I could to make sure she was okay. I told her about the therapy I'd arranged, about my plans to move closer to my family, and that, yes, we were going to get a divorce. I watched her face change from anger to relief, then back to sadness. She leaned into me, and all she said was, thank you mom. When we went back inside, it was clear something had shifted. My husband kept looking at me, but I ignored him sitting with the kids and focusing on them. The rest of the night was tense, but for once, I didn't care. Later, after everyone left, he pulled me aside and asked why I'd been so cold. I stared at him, feeling a wave of exhaustion I didn't even know I had. I told him we were done. No more pretending, no more speeches, no more trying to piece together something shattered beyond repair. He got defensive, talking about how everyone's watching, how he didn't mean to hurt anyone. I just told him that I'd done my part, and that if he wanted people to think well of him, he'd have to start doing the work for real or deal with the truth. Now, I'm back in touch with my lawyer, and I'll be moving ahead as planned. For the kids, the therapy appointments are set, and they're handling things well under the circumstances, especially my daughter. I'm glad I told her the truth, 
I think she needed it. As for my husband, he's been weirdly quiet since the party, but I don't trust it. Update 4. After the party debacle, my husband went into a bizarre spiral. I guess my coldness really hit him, because he started sending me text after text at all hours, cycling through every tactic imaginable. One moment, he was apologizing and saying he could change. The next he was accusing me of tearing the family apart and brainwashing the kids. Then, he tried sending flowers, which only confused the kids and annoyed me. But I just ignored him and kept moving forward with my plan, keeping my lawyer updated, staying focused on the kids, and working through therapy. Then came the nuclear move. He showed up at my work. I was horrified, mostly because I didn't know if he'd try to cause a scene, but he kept it subdued. He said he just wanted to talk. I agreed, but I insisted on a public spot nearby, so he couldn't pull any tricks. He sat down, all solemn and said he'd thought it over and was willing to fight for our family if I dropped the divorce. I almost laughed. I told him that our family didn't need him fighting, they needed him to be better. And if he'd been so committed to us, he wouldn't have sat on the sidelines while I held everything together alone. He started to respond, but I cut him off. I told him I was tired of his performance, and if he really cared about the kids, he'd accept the divorce and make it easy on them. I walked away before he could say another word. After that, things happened fast. My lawyer called to say the custody transfer for his daughter had been finalized she was mine. The relief was immediate. I told the kids that we'd soon be moving to a smaller place closer to my family. My daughter's reaction was almost visceral relief. My son asked if they'd get bunk beds. And our newest daughter, well, she hugged me like she never wanted to let go. It was clear. We were ready. But the big twist came the next morning. My husband showed up again, only this time with his parents. They'd heard everything from him and wanted to make amends. His mother was sobbing, practically begging me to reconsider the divorce for the children's sake. She went on and on about how devastated he was and how they'd do anything to help us get back together. I looked at all three of them, his pleading parents and his pathetic face, and I realized something. This wasn't about the kids or even our marriage. It was about him not wanting to be the villain in his own story. But that wasn't my problem anymore. So I told them all, clearly and calmly, that this was the end. And I walked out, holding my head high, my lawyer on speed dial, my bags already packed. So, here we are. I've officially filed the divorce papers, my kids and I are preparing for a fresh start, and my life, for the first time in years, feels like mine. I have no idea what's next, but honestly, I'm okay with that.